there have been so many opportunities and they are still are here, especially if you come to a smaller town and take a risk. It's not always easy and that brings it together. In a tiny town in northern Australia, you'll find a remarkable woman and little known story about how she came to turn outback dust into a diamond empire. Frauke Bolton Bosshammer has been many things. A mother, farmer, immigrant, widow, and now author. But above all, she is a survivor. Today I'm thankful because uh, what all happened in my life, I, I could handle. It's sometimes very hard to, to accept what happened. Her life began far away from this farm, born in Germany just after the war, a place still finding its feet, much like her family. My father was a farmer, but it wasn't traditional because when I was two, my mother died of cancer. And I was the youngest out of three, and I must say my father couldn't handle it too well. Little Frauke was only six and already working on the farm after school, bringing in crops in brutal conditions. Life was tough, but love was possible. She grew up and married a farmer, a dreamer with a wanderlust that couldn't hold him in Germany. Then after a short while, he got the travel bug and we lived a short year in Rhodesia, which is now Zimbabwe. So he heard about Kananara, flew here, and fell honestly in love with it. So we had a lot of fights, but then we agreed oh, only two years and then and then, then we go back. Yes, so I agreed to that. How many years now? 38. <laughs> it's a long two years. <laughs> <laughs> Very long. Kananara was far from an instant fit. As the only German family, they were isolated and the tiny town in the far north of Australia had few facilities. Life was hard. I thought not an intelligent person can live here. And I have eaten my thoughts so often because I have met so many highly educated, very nice, yeah, and very studied people here in Kananara. No, no, that's completely wrong. But I just thought, so isolated, how can you live here? Yeah. For her husband, Frederick, there were other demons too. It is different to Germany. He was a very good farmer in Germany, very precise, very accurate. But it is very different here, very, very different. So he tried to find a good manager, but nobody wanted to come to Kananara, honestly. His perceived lack of success became crippling. I woke up at night time and I checked straight away the guns and they were all there. So I thought, no, that's, it's fine. He's just getting up and sitting in the office and doing his book work because by then the money side wasn't that good either. And I went back to sleep and at five o'clock I woke up again and looked for him and, and then I found him. Yeah, and he must have hidden another gun somewhere, yeah. And I didn't know what my future was. I really did not know my future. Widowed with four children and a thousand hectare farm to run, she decided to fight on, harvesting Frederick's last crop and holding on to the farm, still in the family today. She also grieved, but then once again opened her heart to Robert Bosshammer, a respected Ord farmer. He was young and had a nice deep voice and <laughs> so... <And> you swooned. <laughs> Oh, a little bit later. You need to grieve. It doesn't matter the time, but you need to grieve yeah, deep, but you, you, at time you need to grieve. Robert and Frauke had a baby girl completing their family. Her eldest, Fritz, took up farming alongside her husband. Despite her busy life, Frauke had her own dreams to run a business. And right on their doorstep was a diamond mine. It was at one stage the biggest diamond mine in the world, not for gemstones, but also for industrial stones. And what always fascinated me, they have the pink diamonds. And 
intense color, and only Argyll in the whole world has these intense colors. Her backyard business grew and grew, attracting famous clients from around the film world, like Nicole Kidman and Baz Luhrmann. But Frauke's life took another tragic turn. One of her sons went missing. A massive search began. His whole football team was there and who else from the farm, everybody who had time to look for him because by then his boat was found upside down. So it, it, wasn't, it wasn't good. And the police was there too. And that night there was a storm here and he was found. His body was found in the Ord River. But it was his own demons, like his father's, decades earlier, that claimed him. We still don't know why he did it. We have no clue at all. Because he was a very popular young man, but introverted. So we have no idea why. And that, that shocks you to the core. Yeah, to lose a child. But we have to be thankful we had him for 20 years. You get the question, are you over it? And no, you never get over it. And you don't want to get over it because he's still part of your life forever. But you get forward, you move on. What, what can you do? Despite her pain, Peter's death fueled her latest mission. Frauke has just published her autobiography, A Diamond in the Dust. Her story is confronting, but she says if it saves others from pain, it's worth sharing. She wants readers to know the role genetics can play in suicide and depression. Talk to them. Talk, talk, talk to them and, and find some professional help. It, it is these days available, but please talk, talk, talk. Get them out of their shell. Frauke is philosophical about what this unrelenting place has taken from her, but also about what Kananara has given back. If I would die tomorrow, I still had a good life. I have two husbands who love and loved me. I have wonderful kids and I think the, the grief, especially about Peter, has brought the family more together. There have been so many opportunities and they are still are here especially if you come to a smaller town and take a risk and, and start a business. So it's not always easy, and that brings it together. If you drink water here, you come back here. <laughs> oh, you, you, you have it always in your blood, yes, yeah. Frau Canal has one of the most valuable collections of pink diamonds in the world, which will continue to gain in value as mining draws to an end in 2020. And as for slowing down, at 71, why start now? No, what would I do? <laughs> I need something to do. Yeah. Like a Kimberley diamond, she's been through plenty, only to shine in this magical place she calls home. <laughs>